you know what? This is a friend and and, and a trusted, trusted friend. And I, and I don't say that lightly because that's a rare, rare thing. They now have to keep printing or we crash. We've got this ticking time bomb. Talking gold with the one and only Andrew McGuire. Welcome to Live from the Vault. Ho, 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 and a Merry Christmas to you or Happy Holiday Seasons wherever you are around the world. Welcome to Live from the Vault. My name is Shane Morand, and I will be your host for this very, very, very special episode that we have been all looking forward to. And now the guest is going to be over. You're going to about, or you're about to find out who is our mystery guest for the last episode of the year. Again, and from the entire Live from the Vault team worldwide, we want to thank you uh, for your continued support. And as you can imagine, you know, throughout the years now, uh, we're way past our 100th episode. And as you can imagine, our community just keeps growing, keeps growing, keeps growing every single day, every week, every month, and now every year. And thanks to you, the Life from the Vault community, we really want to thank you. So there's a lot to talk about during these historic times. We're ending 2022 and fear not because we have the one and only Andrew McGuire in the house and he'll be talking gold. But here's the question. Who will he be talking gold with? And you may have guessed, and maybe you didn't. Maybe you think it's this person. Maybe you think it's that. But this is going to be an amazing episode. So fasten your seatbelts. You know, Life in the Vault gives you access to information and updates that you just can't get anywhere else. And this episode of Life in the Vault is going to be no exception. And with that, let's head over to the UK and talking gold with Andrew McGuire and our special guest. Well, thanks, Shane, and a Merry Christmas to you too. And look, I just want to say, you know, this is the hundredth and goodness me, I'm losing count now, well over a hundred episodes in. And this has all been about education and um, being so privileged to be a part of this Live From The Vault team, which is a world-class team. And one person, very special person that we've never had on this show is Tom Coughlin, our CEO. In fact, Tom Coughlin is the visionary behind everything really with these solutions we're going to talk about today. Now, we rarely mention Kinesis in our educational Live from the Vault episodes. We're really about just telling people what's going on. And I think the reason for that is is that we want to really just be a part of the solution on every single level. So obviously the first thing to understand is, and, and there's a lot, I mean, look, there's a lot of deer in the headlights about what's going on in the markets. They seem so counterintuitive. So what we do is really essentially try and break down exactly what's going on, but our solutions, there are solutions. And, we, and I think this is what we're gonna bring Tom in to kind of talk about. But the journey kind of starts um, nearly 12 years ago now, in fact, almost 12 years ago, when I think everybody knows my history is uh, that I'm actually a whistleblower, a re accredited whistleblower. It is well known that I've been working with the, uh, the CFTC regulators in America. I've been working with the regulators in the UK. Uh, I've been working with the DOJ uh, in America. And, and basically what it is, is that we discovered, uh, it was back in 2008, I think we were aware of a particular, a very nasty game that was going on in the markets. And, and I think it was the point where I think I realized there was something that was not right about um, the, the making money in, in, in a certain way. It's not all about making money. Sometimes you have to look at the bigger picture. And what was happening was we discovered, we, we discovered that there was a, a fix going on on a regular basis where that would actually determine the actual price of gold and silver to the penny 24 hours and sometimes 48 hours ahead. So this was conducted by way of a siloed call with some a telephone call with some very, very, very limited number of people. And actually, I'm quite happy to say it was on the Autobahn, um, uh, Deutsche Bank Autobahn uh, network that was hosting that. 
And we all know what happened to Deutsche Bank. But anyway, long story short, we were, we were able to determine the exact fixed price well in advance. So that sounds, you say, hey, great, this is great. Well, okay, well, you, can, you can make a lot of money, not just knowing where the price is gonna be exactly at a certain point, and usually that would be 3 p.m. fix on a certain day. And so, of course, you'd make your bets accordingly. Now, that's what the insider game is about. We just happen to break into it. So all well and good, you might say, and people say to me, are you crazy blowing the whistle on that? I mean, you could have made billions. Well, it's not all about that, is it? It's about having, uh, this is all about a balance in life, a balance, it's about integrity. And without integrity, what the hell is good is money to you. And I think we're, we've kind of joined, we, we're in the gold space where it's, uh, the irony of it is, is that in the gold space, you can't have reams of, of, of legal papers when you do a deal. No, it's one of the few industries left where your word is your bond. And when you buy and sell something at a certain point, you live by that. It doesn't matter if the price moves, you're buying large volume. And this is a very small world really. And, and yet we all pretty much know each other, but these guys, by siloing that into their little ring fence world, were able to game that. So what we did was went to the CFTC and said, okay, and, 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 and what we did was actually, just to attest to it, to make sure there was no funny business here, what we did was contacted a law, a law firm and sent them a, an exact price, time stamped where the gold would then be fixed on a, at a future date, next day, 24 hours later, or 48 hours later, usually at the PM fix. So I'm just giving you a background as to just how rigged this was. So they then said, well, uh, okay, well, we'll track it. So we, uh, in, it really started an investigation which had been shut down. This was back in 2008. And I think what really prompted it was waking up one day after we, 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 we saw people in Bolivia, uh, and after, and bear in mind, bear in mind that uh, in 2008, when Bear Stearns went, um, when lost their, their positioning in the silver market, it uh, was taken over by JP Morgan, and suddenly the price was magically, magically uh, sent down from 20 odd dollars to eight and a half bucks in a matter of months. But what happened was the, the reality of that, while people are making pots and pots of money, there are people on the other side of that, and, and we, we saw uh, Bolivian miners actually creating, uh, actually shuttering mines, losing incomes. There, there's no social services in countries like that. And it even resulted in suicides. And I know this to be a fact, because at the time, before Panorama, which is a BBC program, uh, that conducts um, in-depth investigative programs, came and filmed with us for six months. They went over to Bolivia and actually filmed this. And they actually went to the CFTC and filmed them saying, yes, we're working on uh, Bart Chilton uh, on their, one of their videos said, um, yes, yes, we're working with Andrew Maguire. Uh, he's, he's, he, he's brought this, 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 the, this detail to us and we are definitely working on this as an investigation. So, Long story short, when these when it results in people dying and people losing their their life income, generations of people that have suddenly lost their their the their, their trail of what they do, then you realize there's something has to be done. So what long story short, what we did was brought this evidence to the CFTC. Now we gave them 88 examples. So I'm cutting obviously this is over a period of now of three or four years. We gave them 88 examples of exactly that, where the price was going to fix in 24 hours, time stamped with a legal firm who then sent it to the CFTC. So there's no funny business. This is a robbery being taking place at the same time of, uh, of a day that we would warn the police, essentially the police in front uh, uh, ahead of and say, if you stand by this bank machine at 3 p.m., um, some little granny's going to get hit over the head. Well, you think the police would turn up? 
but they weren't, they weren't turning up. So what we did involve the, C the DOJ and said to the DOJ, why is the CFTC not doing anything about this? Why are they not talking about it? So then they set up two appointments for us. We flew to DC, we went to New York, and, and this, is where the this is where the story starts leading into the solution. At this presentation, we actually showed them on the wall, you know, on big projection screens. We gave them exact examples of, we, they could select any of 88 examples of where the price was gonna fix the next day. And there was the legal firm with us saying, yes, this is what was presented to us. This is what we sent to you. It's timestamped and look where it hit. Almost to the penny. Sometimes we see it literally within a cent on silver, sometimes within half a dollar on, on gold and then bounce back up. And so obviously there was no way of not saying that this, because this was, this was actually dealt with at the fixes, now we know what the fixes are, which is the two times a day in gold, where the gold price is set globally uh, on the, in, in the uh, global markets, on the one time a day in silver, where it is fixed globally. And so basically, these people that were setting the fix were on the call. And actually, some of these names are now in the courts and have been charged with this fraud but this wire fraud, essentially. But back then, what they said to me, the DO said, we said, well, clearly you've got to do something. Why is the CFTC not doing it? You oversee them, go do something. And they said, but the last parting words, and they said, my goodness me, because it's pretty obvious, this, this led all the way up to broad, broad level, because if you are sitting, if you're setting a fix for an institution like JP Morgan, uh, Deutsche Bank, HSBC, Scotia at the time. If you are sitting on the fix, then clearly you're sitting at a, on a, in a board position. You are accountable to the board. So then really what it identified was that all the way up to the top of the chain, CEOs must have been aware of this game. It, it, let's call it a game. It's not, not really a game it, 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 of this fraud. And so basically, it, it was, it's just the implication of that was so major. Now, these are all too big to fail taxpayer funded banks. So what happened was, was <laughs> they said to me, the final parting words was, my goodness me, but Andrew, what are the economic consequences of this? Well, right there, we knew this was an issue. This was not going to get resolved. Now it's taken 10 or 11 years for some charges to get a few, a billion dollar fine almost for, for, for JP Morgan is a slap on the wrist, but essentially it's taken, we knew at that time, nothing was going to happen to change this paper game. It was too embroiled. And furthermore, it could take down the too big to fail taxpayer funded banks, especially after the 2008 collapse. Uh, everything was vulnerable. So I walked out of there, and this is where it gets interesting because I walked out of there and thinking, well, what we need to take responsibility for ourselves. There has to be a solution. And bingo, I don't believe in coincidences. Who do I walk into? Literally, who do I meet within one week of that? Now, I'd heard of Tom Coughlin and his efforts to create an institutional grade um, physical exchange that was outside of the ring fence of the LBMA, I'd heard of him through various contacts of mine. It's a small world. I walk into him. We literally meet a week later. And there he is talking about, look, look what we're doing. Look, this is the solution. And I could suddenly see this was the solution because by creating a parallel but physical exchange, an institutional grade exchange, and it was called the Allocated Bullion Exchange, by creating this, and he was just in the early stages of building this, bringing in uh, experts like uh, uh, Eric Main, who, who'd been involved in the, in the, in, in the physical markets for years, uh, bringing on a team of people who I met. And I suddenly thought, my goodness me, I cannot believe this. This is actual manna from heaven. And 
So really, this is where the story starts. This is where, in fact, we end the Kinesis story. It starts to take root from the allocated bullion exchange. First of all, and first of all, and foremost of all, the allocated bullion exchange had to find a way of aggregating a real physical price, a fungible physical price globally that could be traded on an institutional level by disintermediating all of these various uh, jurisdictions who were all trading in their own levels, uh, where fr high friction between them as people gamed one to the other. And what he did was essentially create this ring or this circle, global, global set of hubs that were so fungible that each there was enough phys sufficient physical liquidity for the, a, an aggregated physical price to be determined. Well, that's where the story starts. Now, I am so proud to bring on uh, Tom Coglin, who is actually more than a friend. He's a brother from another mother. If there's anyone in this world that I trust, it is Tom. Implicitly, we've traveled the world together. We have spent limitless nights without any sleep, <laughs> virtually just surviving on oxygen, maybe the odd drink. But you know what? This is a friend and, and, and a trusted, trusted friend. And I, and I don't say that lightly because that's a rare, rare thing. And integrity is what this is all about. Tom has high integrity. And so please, I'm welcoming Tom to join us today on our Live from the Vault episode. And Tom, I've given you a little bit of, I've given them a little bit of background, but when we met, tell us a little bit about what you were doing with the Allocated Bullion Exchange. Andy, first, thank you very much for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Um, amazing listening to, to your full story there and how you got into the space. I think it's so incredibly important that the, the audience understands it. It's been, it's been a while since I think that story has, um, has been out in the open. So it's, it's very valuable that um, I, I think that you, you step through it there. Firstly, thank you everyone. Um, and uh, here we are in the festive season, um, hence our background. Andy, love yours. Um, I've tried the best I can do here in Australia. Um, it's, it's been, a, I, think, I think it would have touched about 35 degrees Celsius today, but I even started up the fireplace behind me. Um, I'm outdoors, so I've, I've got a t-shirt on, t-shirt and fire. This is the way we do it in Australia <laughs> for Christmas. <laughs> How I got in this space and, and my journey was I came out of um, an accounting and, and financial services space um, at the time, which is going back in 2008, 2009, um, where when I first started getting into precious metals, um, I was I was had my own wealth um, management firm called uh, Track Financial Group. Um, a, lo a lot of the the clients actually in, it, in that firm then have now gone on and become shareholders of the Allocated Bullion Exchange and KVT holders of Kinesis. They're they're littered all throughout our community. Actually, they've been on a a very long journey that goes back now that long, like up to 15 years ago now. So um, there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty individuals out there actually that have been on this journey for quite some time, including, uh, you know, I'm going to do a, a call out to my very old high school um, economics teacher, Bruce Wooten. How are you, sir? Um, I, I, I owe him a, a catch up and a beer, I think. I have to make my way into Brisbane at some point. But... Um, we 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 go, we go back a long time, and how how I actually found my way in in this space was um, yeah wealth management firm, and also I was operating a, a still operating a small hedge fund, um, and at that point in time I was watching you know the the beginning stages of the credit market starting to crack started in the you know the junk bond the subprime um, uh, mortgage market and um, I guess I, I became um, concerned about the counterparty risk out there in the marketplace. 
And with that, I, I wanted to diversify both my investment portfolio in the hedge fund, my personal investment portfolio, and my clients' investment portfolios into precious metals, but not into an ETF because they were subject to the same kind of counterparty risk that I wanted to diversify away from because they had custodians in place that they were, you know, banks or other financial organizations that had that counterparty risk there. And th they were the susceptible counterparts that could potentially be affected by, by an upcoming credit crisis or financial crisis. So I embarked on trying to find um, and, and obtain physical gold and physical silver at the time. And I soon identified here in Australia, there was really no efficient mechanism of doing so. There was, you know, some physical bullion dealers and the Perth Mint, the usual suspects in Australia. They're quite territorial. And anyway, it just wasn't a good experience. At the time, there wasn't really any efficient way to um, obtain physical gold and physical silver in an institutional type environment where um, I could actually, you know, through a liquid market, buy and sell. The costs were too high. I might have to look after logistics, insurance, storage, all this sort of thing. And it, I, I, at the time, I just thought, wow, this is, this is phenomenal because firstly, I didn't see like investment professionals um, recommending to their clients to invest in, in gold or silver at all, yet alone physical gold and silver. So I thought, what an opportunity to put together a structure that solves that problem. I was already deep into um, like basically gold and silver as sound money. I'd already written a report. Instead of trying to advise all of my clients uh, on you know the reasons behind gold and silver, I, I went and wrote a 60-page report. It's, it's, it was like university quality report called Money Modern Hyperinflation. It circulated around the internet a little bit back back in the day, I think. Um, Seeking Alpha picked it up and a few other publications picked it up. But it outlined why, like, I, I was really thought gold was the way to go. It outlined, you know, the, the macroeconomic environment. It was my hypothesis that um, the, the, the US, for example, were not going to be able to get out of this debt situation that they were in. They just couldn't afford it at the end of the day. And, um, it would become diabolical in, in the event of interest rates rising to an extent because the United States just simply cannot afford it with, with their current budget. So anyway, the, the credit crisis unfolded in a, in a, in a really big way, as, as we all know, and um, it was a really good thing that um, I, I did take that impetus to and, and um, I guess the, the, the tactical approach to portfolio management of um, readjusting client portfolios and my own portfolio into uh, physical precious metals because, um, you know, we, we know what ensued from there. There was, you know, stock market crashes, there um, currency volatility, um, bond market crises. Um, and at one point in time, basically everything was going down apart from precious metals. So um, leading on from there, I think that was obviously a, a good move. And we started to build the Allocated Bullion Exchange, which was founded in uh, 2010, early 2010, and also a trading house called um, Bullion Capital, um, which still remains like a significant trading house to this day and actually growing and growing. It's a market maker. Um, in the physical markets as well throughout the world and, and moving physical metals around the world, whereas you know, Allocated Bullion Exchange is an institutional exchange facing um, some of the largest entities in the physical precious metal space, governments. Um, we all know about Indonesia, that's very public, but you know, ABX is a pivotal role in other government deals that we have uh, in the pipeline. Looking forward to announce as well. We can get onto that later. Um, but you know that that's the backstory. So um, that start that that really you know that that really kicked things off as far as the global vision of our like precious metals journey. Um, and what started as an Australian vision quickly turned into a global vision. I jumped on a plane um, to go into Singapore for three days of meetings just to you know test the appetite for 
um, ABX back in those days, those three days of meetings turned into three weeks of meetings. And it just blew me away, um, the, the reception that we were receiving. And then, you know, started the basically the, the whirlwind tour around the world that we did a couple of times talking to um, and collaborating with all different kinds of um, people, you know, from basically, you know, like I, I would call them tier two or tier three sort of bullion dealers, like re even retail facing bullion dealers up to, you know, the bullion trading houses, then into the, the banks, the bullion banks, and then obviously the central banks as well, which was always, you know, so sometimes, you know, with the smaller central banks, it would be, you know, a, a good, positive, constructive conversation with some of the other ones it turned to quite a humorous kind of discussion because you go in and say hey look we're setting up this exchange with with these rules um you know like hey bank of england you know we'd like to approve your vault as being as you know part of our our system as long as you you know sort in with our rules and um you know seeing them sort of like just get like so completely stunned at lost for words with this you know like small town boy from from brisbane australia coming in bold enough to actually say that to them i think i think we got booted out a couple of times just from just they were just so shocked and horrid with our with our <laughs> brashness of the situation but you know that was part of the, the 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 fun of the journey and um you know we we had to have those conversations along the way and um it was it was it was always a lot of fun. We learnt a lot, and we that that's all that market feedback that we got from all that um, all those meetings that we did, which were literally thousands of them. Um, we fed back into all of our systems, and so it got fed back into ABX, and it's been fed into Kinesis as well. Now, so yeah, we built out ABX, we built out Bullion Capital. That was our first real um, organisations that we built in the precious metals markets. And then um, in, you know, we, we were watching with curiosity um, all along the way with the, the evolution of blockchain. Um, didn't, didn't ever have any interest in cryptocurrency beyond just the technology that was actually fueling it. Decentralized payments, decentralized um, ledger, which provided anonymous uh, uh, um, uh, title of registry that 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 was a little bit interesting, but you know we had the ABX, we had our focus there. We're onboarding brokers. Um, we're actually onboarding ten brokers a month at one point in time, and it got too overwhelming actually, just with the the, the sheer sort of um, flow through of of brokers of all shapes and sizes. And um, we decided to we made a commercial decision. The board made a commercial decision to focus on three major projects at the time. And those projects were one, Indonesia. Um, so we had our government deal with Indonesia. Um, two, um, our partnership with Deutsche Borsa um, as well. So Deutsche Borsa, their, their wholly owned clearinghouse coming in, um, clearing the, the, the cash transactions um, side of the each tra trade within, within um, the ABX. And also Kinesis, which we just set up. We we liked what blockchain had to offer as far as um, advancing a vision, a dream that we always had um, and turning it into a reality, being basically re-monetizing gold and silver. So bringing back the gold and silver standards effectively. Our fi we figured if governments don't do it, then private enterprise might as well do it. So that's what we did. We we got comfortable enough to, you know, and, and we found a blockchain that was suitable for us, which was the Stellar blockchain. We um, There was another big thing that we wanted to combat, which um, always was stuck in my mind um, after, you know, studying monetary history, going all the way back, understanding all the power struggles throughout, throughout history with the you know, basically for control of, of the monetary system and banking system. And um, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm an Austrian school of um, economics. Uh, I, I'm in that sort of school. I'm in that camp as well. Um, you know, the von Mises Institute studied all of that. And one thing that was holding, like, that was holding me back from really pushing this, I guess, um, gold and silver money out, Previously, well, one was the tech. Um, 
and two was this whole concept of Gresham's Law. Um, bad money drives out good. So we embarked on building out this yield system, this incentivizing yield system that at the end of the day, when it came time to choose what currency I'm going to use when it comes time to pay for something, goods or services, pay for you know my shopping at, at, at the checkout, what currency am I going to use to do that? My view is, well, the choice needs to be gold, but how are we going to make it gold? How are we going to make it Kinesis gold? Um, well, we have to provide incentive over just you know spending gold because people who value gold don't necessarily want to use it as a payment currency because they've already made the decision to exchange fiat currency um, for gold. So why would they then go and choose to you know spend gold? So we wanted to combat that in the sense that provide greater reward for actually using it. So we build out our yield system. That becomes, you know, incentivizing yield system that then rewards people. So we got those two things aligned. We go, okay, let's go. Let's let's build our kinesis now. So in, I guess the idea was really sort of built out during 2017, and then 2018. Andy, you might you might remember in early 2018 in Saint Moritz, Switzerland, we um, we we built out this model conceptually, and we spent some time in in Thailand. If, if, if you recall, just, just, just immediately prior to, um, to, uh, to Switzerland. And um, we, we were hanging out there with some influential folk and they all wanted to muscle in. And um, anyway, like um, we, we went, we basically flew directly into Switzerland from there. And I'm like, well, I, I better get this like pen on paper now. Like we, we were due to um, present the whole thing like the next day, the next morning. So I had to pull an all nighter and um, like had to like <laughs> relearn how to actually use like um, uh, presentations and that sort of thing again and build it all out and. Anyway, somehow got there. It was, um, it, it, you know, it wasn't the most professional thing in the world, but it actually got there and I was able to present it up on stage with absolutely no sleep whatsoever. And it was met with a standing applause, which, like, that was encouraging. And at, as, as, we, as I walked off the stage, there were already, you know, because at the time the market was hyped up. There were already, there were already organisations trying to muscle into what we were doing and, um, already, you know, there was conversations about carving up the company and doing this and doing that. Anyway, we, we were obviously very encouraged by all of this and, and then embarked on putting things together in a way that we could get it out to market. So um, obviously we were all amped up to do it and we got it out to market. We brought in some, you know, basically went out to the public and we, we um, uh, you know, did a capital raising through the KVTs. We've got, you know, some good patient KVT investors out there that have, have stuck strong by us throughout that whole, that whole time. And I thank you very much for your support and patience during the process. It's been, it's been a journey. Um, let's put it that way. It's been real. So um, that, was, that was going back into 2018. And um, we've come such, such a long way since then. And, um, you know, and, and we've, we've built out and laid some really, really strong foundations to get us to where we are today, which, you know, it's, um, I'm, I, I, I look at, you know, our team that we've built, which is actually quite a large team now. Um, and that's a monumental undertaking in its own right. I look at all the systems um, behind the scenes that no one actually sees and um, I'm, I'm incredibly proud about that. I look at, you know, I log into the platform every morning and I'm incredibly proud of our platform and it's robust. Um, it's robust, it's hardened now, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's secure. Um, we haven't had, you know, one incident of, of um, any kind of security breach or anything like that. So that's something to be very proud of. And, you know, the, the hackers have a crack. Trust me, they have a crack. And, and um, yeah, they, there's, there's, there's just no way in. Um, well, 
they haven't been able to find a way in in, in any way and we're very secure in, in our approach and um, users can obviously, you know, they can utilize things like um, hard wallets and we, we obviously sell the cool wallet as well and that's incredibly important. And, you know, I think security is one of the biggest um, items of the day because doesn't matter where you look, trust is ebbing in all different levels of institution, whether it be government institutions and corporate institutions and um, trust is ebbing. And um, so we'll be doing our part in maintaining and even building and firming up trust with, with our community, um, building up that, that sense of security, implementing um, some more stronger security measures as well. We're going to um, a more robust um, auditing regime. Um, actually, I might as well announce it right here that you know, in 2023, we're going to be trialing a quarterly audit process as well. It's a huge undertaking because, you know, all of our vaults need to get audited at the same time by auditors all around the world. OK, like there might be a, a day or two difference, like with time zones and everything like that. But, you know, there's no movements in and out of the vaults during that time and they're getting audited. And when I say audited, it's not like, okay, where's your bar list? Oh, yeah, that looks okay. No, these guys are weighing, they're inspecting, they're verifying, they're counting, they're taking down all the bar numbers and they're, 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 it's proper audit verification that goes on. And for 2023, we'll be trialling a, a quarterly audit process um, to, to really firm up um, that, that, that confidence and trust in our organisation. Yeah, Andy. So, I mean, that sort of takes it up, us up to current days in, in where we are. Like, I, I think right now we've paid out $7.5 million in yields. Um, we've, we've got our KVT yield coming up as well, which we're paying out millions of dollars more. That's, that's not too far away. That's, that's in the new year and early new year. Um, and, um, you know, I reflect back. It's, it's been a journey. It's, it's almost pushing, you know, it's going on almost five years now, but um, wow, plenty, plenty of uh, trials and tribulations along the way. Plenty of lessons learnt, but we're 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 sure on some some firm footing now. The one thing that, and I have a lot of conversations with a lot of people, and and I think the one thing that really stands out and answering a lot of their questions is, you know, how is this possible? How's this? How come no one's done this? Well, nobody could do what we're doing. The reason is because Tom built the four pillars for the allocated bullion exchange, which involved all the things that uh, the quality assurance frameworks, all of the infrastructure that is required to disintermediate um, uh, prices around the world. But this is the key part to actually create a physical price that could be that could be brought down to a, the minuscule of a, um, a fraction of a gram that could be fungible globally. Now, without that, we have, sure, we have the FX price. You have got the gold price and you've got the silver price at the, uh, at the uh, fixed every day. Do you think you could, you think that's the real physical price? No, the physical, just to illustrate, the physical price or the price fixed in London is a ring fenced around maybe three to five tons which is ludicrous when you think of the actual volume of real physical that is being traded every day. So it's naturally that price is not the price. In fact, the more you want, the higher that price becomes. And so because literally physical is tight in supply at a paper price. So literally, yeah, you might be able to buy a little bit above that price in a small amount, but not in wholesale. And this is the point. Uh, this is a wholesale solution. And with this group, this incredibly strong wholesale network globally, and believe me, in the early days, when, when, you, when somebody came in, like the Bank of China would come in with a kilo bar order, do you think JP Morgan didn't know exactly who that was? But ABX provided people like that, big institutions, the ability to hide behind a number audited, KYC, all the rest, but hide behind a number, suddenly taking that visibility away from the bad guys who were looking to set prices. So this was already the first part of the solution of when we came out of the DOJ. This is the, already the first part of that. But the point I'm trying to make here is Kinesis could not exist 
without the work that ABX did, without the infrastructure that ABX created, which Tom created as that visionary. So really we have to thank him for that because there is nothing else out there that can actually really break the physical gold price down to such a small amount that it could be used as money again around the world. And obviously creating the yield systems around it, incentivize, as Tom just said, you need an incentive. Why would you use your gold? If you have gold, why are you gonna spend it? Well, Tom has given the reason why. So look, this is an incredibly exciting journey. Tom just talked about governments now looking to us. I mean, Tom, I don't know if you want to expand. I know we can't talk about certain things, but Indonesia, my goodness me, what, 280 million people, is that not? I mean, we're addressing the underbank, the unbanked. We're looking at other countries. Tom, is there anything that we can share with people? I know there's certain things we can't talk about. Firstly, just just to you know go over some points that, that you were making there, it's incredibly important points around um, that, that allocated um, like t uh, t title of ownership. I encourage all new users, existing users to go over our, our terms and um, the agreement that we have um, set out as far as um, you know our, 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 the way that title works and it works under what's called Bailey arrangement, which, which we act as safekeeper for your metal and that's it. Um, it never sits on our, our balance sheet. Um, it's always title of, of the investor, of the holder. However, when you put your money in the bank, it's not really yours anymore. It becomes, it, it's, the, it's owned by the bank. It sits on their balance sheet. So your money is an asset of the bank. And this is why there's bank runs and stuff like that and, and the, the ability to bail in as, as Cyprus have seen and for, for banks to get up to all different kind of shenanigans. I mean, um, at the end of the day, you are an unsecured creditor of the bank. So if something happens to the bank, then line up with all the other unsecured creditors. Um, there's a lot of horror stories that through, littered through, throughout history of, you know, basically, you know, what, what happens to bank depositors? The government has to step in and offer this insurance and stuff like that. But now we're reaching times where, you know, a government's solvent and, and you know, uh, what's, what's going to happen to currencies? We're seeing all, already so much volatility in, in the, the currency markets this year. And um, I, 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 I can't see that stopping anytime soon. There's been this like rolling sort of um, crisis that... I believe started back with the you know the 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 bond and banking crisis back in 2010 and um, 2011 and it's it, it, it you know we central planners printed an enormous amount of money to kick the can down the road of the problem and it you know it flared up again obviously recently and um, you know we're we're going through these problems again so. Um, and it's you know if you look into different places around the world now inflation is is flaring up which is really the devaluation of fiat money so um that basically you know fiat falling in in all over the world and I, it's really a race to zero like they're all gyrating in in relative terms to each other but they they're falling and Andy, I, you know, we both have a, you know, we're both quite sensitive, I think, to the injustices that, that we discovered ourselves along the way in the precious metals markets and, you know, in the form of, you know, potential manipulation and, and not potential manipulation. I mean, that's proven in case after case now um, with billion dollar fines handed out, as you were saying. And um, I know that there's still a lot more underway and, and even, you know, stuff underway that, um, that we're privy to and stuff like that. So um, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff that's unfolding um, and that's going to keep on coming out. It's, I feel it to my bones that um, the precious metal markets are in for uh, a treat in, in 2023. Doesn't matter where you look, look at comics inventories, you know, basically dissipating. Um, you, you look at, you know, what's happening in the macroeconomic climate, 
with inflation, with everything like that. And, and prices can only remain subdued for so long. And, um, you know, the, the establishment can only maintain control for so long of, of um, suppressed prices. So I, I think that we're going to see uh, basically a pivoting from the primary price discovery mechanism coming out of the fallacious paper markets or deriv- and derivative markets and moving towards what it should be being the, the physical market. At the end of the day, gold and silver are physical like, products and um, the, the prices should represent spot physical immediate delivery. So um, if I buy gold, I want immediately delivery of it. I, I don't want to have to wait. And same with silver, um, I should be able to take immediate delivery. That's what we offer. Um, we offer immediate delivery. Like, would love for all users to, you know, go through the delivery process, take delivery as much as you like, test out the system, test out, test out the system. Um, and, and the more that it's, you know, you test it out, then the more confidence and comfort is built in it as well. So certainly encourage users to do that. We've obviously expanded across the supply chain now, Andy. Um, obviously, you know, like as we were setting up, we encountered a lot of different challenges, um, I would say, and um, to, 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 you know, a lot, a lot of things got thrown our way, obstacles got thrown our way to, to try to, um, uh, uh, I guess, um, obstruct our success. And we became a little bit battle-hardened from that, I would say. And one thing that I think both of us understood was we need to take control of the supply chain. If we don't have control of our supply chain, then we don't really have any control whatsoever and we are vulnerable. So, um, you know, that's why our community has watched things like uh, the Kinesis Mint established, physical mint out of Istanbul. Um, There's there's, um, a refinery being built right now um, it's it's almost complete um, out of Istanbul as well. We've built a vault there as well. Um, you know, we, we've got um, massive amounts of vaulting space in in Liechtenstein um, where we're you know leasing a building in, in, and you know like to house all this stuff. Um, we've got interest in mines. We've got offtake agreements with mines, um, and you know, obviously, you know that branches into different government deals with with contracts and mandates um, there for, you know, vaults, even refineries and mints in different countries as well. So, but I just wanted to provide that sort of context as well around, you know, why we actually, we're, we're physical players at the end of the day and we're, we're experts at, at, in the physical. We're utilising technology to provide that modernised payment and, and ultimate banking system, even though we're not a bank, but we all need to engage in banking services, whether it be, you know, paying for something at the checkout. So this is this is what we've been building, basically an alternate system providing the choice to someone to opt out of what I call corrupted um, established systems and into new systems that serve the people. Tom, this is this is this is an incredible story. And, And interestingly, in the early days, Having dealt with regulators in the past, I was privileged enough to come and join Eric and part of the team to come and visit the regulators in Indonesia. And what was a, um, what struck me is how they needed to be absolutely certain that physical, that it was physical and that it was in a vault and that it wasn't leveraged. And this was a, the key issue for them. Uh, and that's why I think why it was so interesting and nice to meet a regulator that seemed so passionate about his own country and the services that they are really truly supposed to provide uh, for their countries, unlike perhaps some regulators that we've been dealing with in the past. But Tom, you know, this is this is an incredible journey. And I know there's I know that you can't touch on some of the other uh, ventures, some of the other, in, uh, you know, uh, governmental deals, which which will uh, obviously roll out. But I was going to ask you, you know, the average person I talk to says, well, well, how can I participate? And I said, well, and I say to them, look, 
You can become part of this solution. You know the, to the one ton a day that Tom says, we, well, let's build on that. Well, you can do it, guys. You guys watching here, everyone that's looking at this, pick up your debit card. And, and, and I want Tom to, to run through that in a second if he, if, he, if he would be so kind. But you fill up your debit card, start using it. Each time you spend, you are forcing bullion to be bought from the market. What you're doing is essentially tightening supply. And what does that mean? It means raising the price. I mean, ultimately the solution, this is such a holistic solution. I mean, this is why I wake up some mornings thinking, well, where do we start? This is just too much, you know, but this is it. The power is within all of us. Here it is. It is your job now, guys, in my view. You've been given this gift. It's your job to go out and use what's just been given to you. All the infrastructure's there. My goodness me. And thinking of gold and silver, Tom was talking about gold and silver. I mean, how can it be worth less than its physical value? It is all the energy that was put into making that piece of gold, anything tangible, to be honest, the labor costs, the energy costs are all in it already paid for, fully paid for with inflation rising through 10, 15. What's the real rate? But minimum 10, as quoted in Europe and, and the US and, and the UK. Well, Obviously, it's going to cost more of those fiat currencies to buy that same thing, you know, where because new labor costs and new, and new, new, new everything comes in from, from everything from labor costs to, to, to buying those physical supplies. So what we're saying is gold has, has already, silver, gold and silver already has all of that energy in it. Kinesis provides the next level of energy which is for you to spend this every single day and actually drive more volume through the system. So Tom, the virtual card, it's with us. This is what people can have today. There's more coming. Please tell everybody. Yeah, certainly. So Andy, of course, we've got the virtual card live to 61 countries around the world. That'll be rolling to basically all non-sanctioned countries around the world. So it'll be a truly global program where, whereby users can at point of sale at the checkout or, you know, through, well, online checkout or physical checkout actually uh, spend their gold and silver um, as, as money. Um, they can also spend digital currencies um, as well. Like we obviously in the Kinesis monetary system, we offer choice to our users. We've got eight fiat currencies and a bunch, you know, a bunch of cryptocurrencies as well. That's that's forever expanding. But, you know, at, at the core, our base currencies, physical gold, physical silver, one for one um, allocated title of ownership in the in the investors, in the user's name. Um, with the yield system overlaid, whereby the more that you spend, um, the more that you hold, the more that you use the, the, the currencies, then the more you're rewarded for it. So I like to call it like a collective system of shared wealth. Um, of course, you know, like uh, transaction fees need to be um, um, uh, charged. But instead of doing what a bank does, which is just bank, the transactions, like for it to go through as revenue, we uh, that this is what the blockchain allows us to do. They're they're sent off to the master fee pool in the blockchain. Everyone can see that and watch it. We update it in our platform every five minutes, so you see the the, the master fee pool ticking up during the month, and um, at the end of each month we distribute it. Um, well, early into the new month, but at the end of each month, it's it's calculated, and, and early in the new month we distribute it out to all our different holders. And you know, there's um. There's all different community members that show the yield payment come out and that sort of thing. And um, it's 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 actually, you know, I, I think it's the only system like it in, in the world. So we've we've certainly pioneered. We've been great pioneers there. It's something to be very proud of, Andy. We've come a long way since our very humble beginnings and um, really, really excited about the future. I, I sort of see the, the precious metals community as like the real, you know, deep, hardcore, freedom-loving community in which I'm, I'm a proud member of. 
But people getting red pilled all over the place now, um, and understanding with their freedoms being threatened in different ways, they're they're um, joining this sort of freedom movement, and a lot of them haven't been exposed to precious metals before as money. Um, so a lot of them didn't even know that precious metals were money before, um, but they're getting, you know, perhaps exposed to different general interest groups. It might be in the health space. It might be in the, you know, like farming and food supply and security space. It might be in the technology space. It, um, it might be in the spiritual space. Um, all, all different sort of interest groups are, are coming together and understanding that by joining together and working together in like different alternate systems, different alternate ways, then we are really building out our own reality of tomorrow. We've got a range of really exciting services coming along. Um, obviously, we've got our, our virtual card that's going around the world. We're going to have physical cards with even different sort of cash back and reward programs attached to them. Then branching into Kinesis Pay, where you know merchants around the world can can utilize Kinesis Pay, um, and you know that online physical point of sale. You won't even need the debit card then. It's it's just going to be complete circumvention of actually existing banking systems, um, and that that it, it expands from there. Um, meanwhile, we're expanding our physical operations, and it's it's. We'll be bolting on and doing a lot of different partnerships, government level, institutional level, and um, that that super excited. And then we 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 start to broaden our audience. So broaden our audience into you know the general public that perhaps hasn't been exposed to precious metals before. I'm really excited about the future. A, a lot of people are very demoralised as as to where we are at the moment. But you know that's because we I mean. <laughs> If, if we choose to look at problems, then you can see problems everywhere. If we choose to look at solutions, we, we, there's solutions everywhere as well. And the solutions for me is what gets me excited. Um, and I see, you know, Kinesis is a big part of, um, I think, what we can do. Um, it's what, you know, we know how to do where our, our expertise is. And so I just see it as, well, this is, this is our way to serve. Um, and provide some value back to humanity and we'll do the best that we can do. But the other thing with the monetary system is it really acts as the backbone to a society, certainly an economy, but a society as well. So you have to get the monetary system, the actual money that circulate in the system. It has to be fair. It has to be honest. So we think that we have it right. We'll keep on refining it, of course, to, to make it better and better. Um, and this thing's, you know, this thing's not going away. This is a, like a multi-generational thing. I, I mean, it, I, I, I read, I read on a tea packet, I think, the other day that, you know, oh, you know, this we, you know, started to, you know, basically sell tea. I think it was Twinnings, is it the 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 London-based tea, like three hundred years ago in seventeen oh five or something like that, you know. Going forward in 300 years' time, it will be the same story with Kinesis. We, we are laying the foundations for something that will last the test of time. We've got the currency that lasts the test of time. There's no doubt about that, right? There's, there's, that's not going away. All, all these other crypto pundits can get up and say, you know, why they think that Bitcoin might be better or this and that. Really, there's just, there's no argument. There's no contention. Um, and same with fiat. Fiat, no fiat has really lasted the test of time, but gold and silver have, like for millennia. So that's not going away. And we, we've set the, we've built the foundations for this monetary system to never go away as well. So it will keep on building. It will keep on building, and it's not going away. And actually, the community that's with us now, I have to congratulate you all. Your your, your first movers, because there's a lot more coming. As we broaden things out, obviously we bring online new target markets. We've got the Kinesis Pro platform coming. We've got, um, um, you know, we start to open up to the banking and payment um, target market as well. Um, obviously, we'll be appealing more to the general investment target market, um, and just but we're broadening things out. And we're going to be coming up, and we've got some really exciting campaigns that are coming out that. 
we'll be working in a very subtle way with messaging and with positioning as well to to help start educating people on on I guess also the problems out there, but how we're the solution as well and how they're really empowered to to make the decision to opt out and to opt in. And um, it, it it's just very subtle messaging um, that at the end of the day, it's a, it, it'll, it'll steer people in and, and help them on their journey of education in, into gold and silver as sound money and the Kinesis system as how it can serve them. I think that it's what, 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 what is amazing to me is that this is here now. It is here to be used now. It can, all you have to do is literally go to your phone, download an app. It's free, completely free. Get the Kinesis app on your phone and just check out what you could be, why you could be part of this solution. And actually, one other thing that really, really I love about Kinesis, it is there's a massive social side to what we're doing. And Tom touched on how by we're, we're really getting getting ownership of the entire supply chain. What are we doing? What are we doing when when we're assisting the guy who actually takes this metal out of the ground get a fair price that he can afford? You know, drugs. He can afford f- clean water. Can afford. He can actually be treated as a human being, as opposed to this terrible friction silo system where they're, they're just hand to mouth and kept hand to mouth by actually gaining control of the entire supply system. Obviously, from the perspective of 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 Kinesis in in its growth is one thing, but the other side of that is is the social side all the way down to the end user benefits and ultimately what where we're going with this and Tom was just alluding to where we're going with this in 23 24 25 the next 100 years the next 200 years hey maybe I won't be around but it doesn't matter we're doing what we're doing is we're creating a future that it, where where we're taking control of what is really a very corrupt system. And really, literally, gold is money, yes, but money is energy. And this is energy. And actually what Kinesis is doing cleverly is putting this energy into work, to work. And it, and it, is, it is producing more energy. Energy begets energy. This is such a positive solution, guys. You know, I really just want to welcome everybody and thank everybody for all your support because you've become a really a really important part of our everyday life and i really do thank everybody for joining us on this journey i want to thank everybody as well andy it's it's been an amazing journey um we've got a long way to go um i'm not going to stop it's it's certainly my lifelong journey um I know I've already got some 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 grey going here and grey everywhere, really. But um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get a lot greyer. I'm, I mean, I'm already starting to look like Santa Claus, right? But uh, I th- <laughs> next year it's gonna be progress. Each year it's gonna be progressively more and more uh, of a Santa Claus look. I think, Andy, we have to make this a regular thing. This same time every year, um, you know, dial in, do this fireside um little chat i'm i'm really looking forward to it um and reflect um so this is the start of the reflection and you know we're we're, we're following through and doing everything that you know we're doing on our end there there you know there's there's plenty more to come the the, the you know that's it's going to be pretty entertaining along the way let's let's put it that way um it's it's a journey it's a journey don't get me wrong um rome wasn't built overnight um, you know, global monetary systems are not built overnight, unfortunately. Wish they were. Wish I could just take the, you know, ideas and just click the finger and make it happen. But um, we've got over 250 um, staff members that are that are plugging away at this. Now, I, I get sent the numbers and I'm like, wow, boom. And, you know, we're recruiting, we're recruiting, we're recruiting and um, really ramping things up. And to be honest, I... I from a timing perspective, everything's aligned. Everything's good timing. Um, you know, we're, 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 everything's unfolded in, in, a, in a really great way. So 
Thank you, everybody. Merry Christmas as well. I hope you have an amazing, you know, Christmas with with your family, with your loved ones. Um, get some, you know, some good R and R, some downtime. Um, you know, we all need to charge the batteries over this period. I got out in the surf today. I think I'm a little bit sunburnt, but uh, you know, get out. You know, get the reset required to to power into the new year, 2023, and We've got a, we've got a lot installed for you all, and I want to I want to really thank you again, and thank you very much for for you know all your support to date, and um, see you in the new year. Yeah, and you know, and not just speaking as a director, but speaking for the whole community. Thank you, Tom, for the vision, for everything that all the hard work. I've seen you. I know. I've witnessed you slumped on the floor under your laptop. And that was in San Moritz at one point. Why? Because you just wanted to get this thing over the line. I've never met anyone who has such balls. I'm sorry, but this is, this is and that's an actual term I have to use. This is a guy with balls. He's a warrior. And he really is the leader of our team. And thank you for everything, Tom, from every one of us. Thank you, Andrew McGuire, and to the one and only Thomas Coughlin. Thank you so much, Thomas, for everything. And on behalf, uh, and I'm speaking to Thomas now, on behalf of the whole Life from the Vault community all over the world, all of our you know, loyal uh, subscribers and followers, we want to thank you, Thomas, for putting together this genius and for putting together the team uh, all over the world to put this genius monetary system together and making a lot of people's dreams come true. Remember to everyone out there, buy physical and make sure it's one-to-one -one and understand the difference between what Andy affectionately calls the casino, paper and gold, silver markets, and the physical gold and silver markets. They're not the same. Don't be fooled. Buy physical. And there you have it. That's all we have for you today and for this year on another episode of live from the vault so please help keep spreading the word about this channel by hitting that like button right now you know share this uh, if you haven't already subscribed subscribe click on that little bell that you see there if you'd like to be notified as each episode goes live and with that we will see you next year right here on live from the vault see you in 2023 bye for now <laughs>